and the degree of the degree of f in each of the variables u i bar is what g l y calls the differential degree, and the degree of f in this particular variable u zero zero. Um, sorry, that that should be the h derivative, not the h power. So that's my mistake. Um, um, sorry. That degree is, called, is what they call the leading differential degree of B. So these are some numerical things which, well, okay. I mean, if you remember for the Chow, for Chow forms, for Chow varieties, we fixed a dimension and a degree. And, okay, in the differential case, fixing the dimension and the order is akin to fixing the Zariski dimension, you might say. And fixing these two things is what, well, what GLY regarded as akin to fixing the degree of the differential variety. Whether or not that's true, maybe one should consider, but, um, okay, but, but they found these invariants useful for various purposes. Okay, so now I want to define differential algebraic cycles in general, in the same way that I defined algebraic cycles before, and define differential Chow forms of differential algebraic cycles. So, so here's a differential variety, and it's called order unmixed if all the components have the same Colchin polynomial, the same differential dimension and order. Mm -hmm. So it's roughly saying that you're equidimensional. That's, that's all we're saying, okay? And that makes sense because before we were considering only equidimensional cycles. Okay. So. Um, so let V be some order unmixed differential variety with dimension D in order H. And uh, okay, so take those to be its minimal to be its minimal irreducible decomposition, and take Fi to be the I should have bars over the U's, sorry, to be the child form of, of VI. And these are differential child forms? <laughs> yes. Different. The subscript the union, the superscript on the union. Oh, oh, it's I from one to L. So I from one to L. There, those are okay. the okay. components, okay. and um, and um, and then uh, then I'll take uh, so to find things sort of strange here. But, um, okay, so if then I'll call a cycle, um, or I'll call a cycle some some formal. Some formal sum of of different of equidimensional differential subvarieties, um, where the SIs are the multiplicity, and I, I should have put this fourth bullet point before the third. Sorry, and um, and you define the differential Chow form to be the product with the powers in the same way as you did for the algebraic Chow. Form. This is confusing. Yeah, there's in fact. There's a paper by, by Wei Li and a student of hers uh, giving an algorithm to perform the computation. Yeah. Oh, that. Yes. But that was no one the meaning of the composition. From the characteristic set of, of V. So. Oh, okay, start. Let me only. Okay, I, I don't want to speak for what she did entirely, but in the case that. Take V to be a, a, an irreducible differential. No, 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 my question is about oh. this. Oh. Number. Is F confusable? <coughs> um, from, I mean, from Define given what data? Uh, given the defined equations of V. Uh huh. You mean, you mean with, with the multiplicities as well? What is the just, multiplicity? Just the equation. How do you define of multiplicity of a differential variety? So, so you start with V, so given V, output F. Like F depends on the size. Yeah, yeah, so, yes. Uh, I, th I, think, I think yes. Um, I don't want to speak too uh, definitively on this, but yeah, I, I think so. And um, yeah, but I mean, I can explain why, uh, but maybe it's... But can, can then this help compute the minimum of the composition? Well, yeah, but 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 here there's an important assumption, which which I think you would find unsatisfying, and that's that the the v here has to be equidimensional, 
And in that case, yes. you, you can compute the... Oh, yeah. Jim, yes. a basic question. Yeah. What do you mean by the multiplicity of the differential variety? Okay, well... Cycle, a differential cycle? Yeah, I just mean this, this number here in front of the, of the VI. How do you compute it? I mean, what well, I give you the cycle. In, I give you the cycle in some way. Well, but it's a differential variety. Yeah, but but this is just a formal sum over oh, where the SIs okay, so are. It's just a formal sum. Yeah, it's just a formal sum. Um, but I mean, if you're talking about with with equations or something, I mean, yeah. Well, okay, so there's. Okay, you, set for the variety. Yeah, I mean, so you have, then, say you have the generators. Combinations. Yeah, okay, um. Okay, so, I guess, so that's you, okay, go ahead. Yeah, you, you just look at the. I'll that, ask you later. Okay, I mean. Oh, but Jim, but uh, that condition over the round mix, uh, is that condition computable? Uh, to compute, no. No, it's not. It's not known. Well, I mean, that, it's, it's equivalent. It's almost certainly equivalent to the RIP problem. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so determine. I mean, the question of determining. I mean, it's basically the question of determining whether there's a whether there's a component which uh, which lies in the singular locus. I mean, if you think about it, somehow. I mean. <laughs> okay. So now. Suppose that VIs of differential degree MI and leading differential degree GI. Then the definitions of, for the cycle are given in just multiplicatively. And it's not hard to see that those mesh with looking at certain powers of certain. So, so all right. So now here's the definition. Uh, Here's the definition of a differential cycle. Hey, excuse me. Uh, yes. You have a page before. Pardon me? Uh, yeah, right now here. The SI and the MIs. Uh, what are the MIs? Oh, okay. So the, the MI is the differential degree of VI. Sorry, I might have omitted that. No, no, no. It's the last bullet, first line, yeah. last bullet. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. The MI is the differential degree of, yeah. of VI, and the GI oh, is right. the leading yeah. differential degree. Yeah. So this is. So in the Chow form of VI, this is the, is the differential homogeneity degree in each of the variables UI bar. And, and this is the degree of, U, of the H derivative of, of a particular variable. Okay. Well, so. Okay. And here's the definition of a differential algebraic okay. cycle Sorry, with, a, with a fixed index. So you... You fix the index to be d, h, d is the uh, dimension, h is the order, g is the leading differential degree, and m is the differential degree. Okay. Okay. So now, consider the set of positive cycles of that index. Okay, so, sorry, I keep saying differential cycle, but of course, I'm, I'm only taking the coefficients to be positive. So, so if that, that's a set, um, but if it has the structure of a constructible subset in the Kolchin topology of some affine space of finite type, and by which I, you know, in, in the Kolchin topology, okay, then I'll call that set the differential child variety, or I'll say the differential child variety exists. So this is what we mean by a differential child variety existing. And, and this is what Gao, Li, and Yang mean yeah. by a differential is there child. Any, uh, easy example? Well, it's not too hard in the case that, in the very restrictive case, that G equals 1. Um, but, uh, well, so it's kind of. Um, so that's in, that's in, um, in their paper. Uh, already for their paper on child form, differential child forms. Um, it's not too hard to, to do this case. Um, uh, there's another case which is somewhat, uh, somewhat easy, and that's if, if you assume that um, you're working in some, in, in affine, if you take V to be affine n space, um, in the Colchin topology, and 
you take d to be n minus 1. Because in that case, you'll know that uh, an irreducible differential uh, variety is given by, well, given by the saturation of a single differential polynomial, and parameterizing things is much easier. So in certain very special cases, this result is no. How can this be used? Okay, so there's 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 plenty of applications in in the in the GLY paper. Um, so, for instance, um, <laughs> um, so for instance, if you um, if you were interested in seeing, so let me just give one example, which is not a priori at all related, but maybe gives you a flavor of some of the things you could do. If if you were given a differential variety um, v in some some affine or projective space, and you wanted to know whether you, whether you could, whether for a given point, if you took that point and then took the projection, so let's, so let's fix our variety V here and some point off of V. Okay. And how is the variety given? By, by equations or, or, or by a characteristic set, however you like. Okay. In a point off of the variety, then one thing that this allows you to very easily write down is if you fix a, um, if you fix a hyperplane of your ambient space and think about the projection from the, mm -hmm. the projection of the variety from the point into the hyperplane. Okay, so it's like trying to get an embedding of your variety into a smaller dimensional subspace. Then um, you can use differential chow forms to give the exact condition for the projection to be in, from that point to be injective, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, so it's useful for, and, and of course you couldn't, okay, I mean, um, that's not that unnatural, I mean, because that's essentially a problem in elimination theory, right? I mean, it's a first order condition, you know, you could write down with some block of quantifiers to say that projecting from this point is injective, um, but but I mean, you can use the Chow form to actually do the elimination. Like, what is the use of this? Okay, of differential Chow varieties. Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm okay. This is very new theory. <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to speak too strongly on that. But I mean, so you might ask, what, what's the? I mean, maybe before that question, one should ask, what's the use of Chow varieties? So, um, so first. Some certain certain arguments about classes of um, varieties uh, can be, I mean, can be done by appealing to to parameter spaces and thinking about, say, the generic element of, of that parameter space. There's certain arguments like that. You can use Chow varieties eventually to define the the Chow ring once you define rational equivalence. There are various uses for that. There's, um, um, so use child varieties to define something called the Lawson cohomology, um, which I don't understand, but, I, but I, I've been told that it has many, many useful applications. Um, it, there's various things, yeah. none of which I'm an expert on. Can I just say one thing for, uh, if you're interested in understanding differential algebraic geometry? that uh, Ritt's anomaly of the differential dimension uh, sort of was a spur of thinking of what happens when you move from generic intersections to specializing the coefficients. And uh, he has an example of a surface uh, in the three-dimensional affine um, differential space and a, a plane. And the surface cuts the plane in a point. In fact, at the origin, which means that the two varieties in projective space, two space, don't intersect at all. And so that is a, a, an anomaly that uh, both written cultures struggled over. And so this is the first attempt, at least uh, in the small, to uh, address that problem. First work generically, and then you specialize the coefficients and what happens. There's also, so that's just, I mean, that's there's also, I mean, there's also, pure you know, dimensional, there's who pure. 
<laughs> so there's also, there's also, for instance, related to what Phil says. I mean, there's a result of cone which, um, yeah, which, which relates, which relates, inter which relates the dimension of intersections of differential varieties to Jacobi's bounds, and shows that a certain, a certain conjecture is equivalent to Jacobi's yeah. bounds. Certain so, yeah. So, so sorry. Um, no, it's, it's stronger than Jacobi's bound. If, if Jacobi's bound is to be true, then, uh, then you have to have something, some restriction on, 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 different, on dimensions of differential intersections. I, I don't want to try to describe well, that's even more interesting than the one I mentioned. So, so this is introduced Yeah, for, uh, because dimension zero or? is where a lot happens. So, without, so this, this, this is something that was introduced in the last year or two, yes. so yeah. probably there are not uh, yeah. applications. Yeah, but, but let me say, I mean, well, well, um, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. 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 This work of this work, I mean, in the paper of, of Galilee and Young, I, I don't want to speak for it because there's many other things proved, and, th and there are there are many applications, yeah. me most of them of a slightly, I guess I would say, a theoretical or geometric flavor. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if they'll be exactly what you're after, but but maybe they will. You don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to speak too strongly for their organs. Okay, but um, Tom Way and I um, proved that the differential child variety exists in general. And the proof, well, I, I don't know somehow how to give a, a straight... There's no, no condition. It always exists. It always exists, although... For all parameters. For all parameters, although you, you might be, well... If, if you're if you're extremely fast, you might notice that for certain combinations of the parameters, it's it would be completely it would be empty. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I'll still say it exists. Yeah. There are there are, there are restrictions, for instance, on G relative to M and H. So. What does finite type mean? Um, I just mean a n for some finite <laughs> finite type just means yeah finite <laughs> finite dimensional yeah, in the Colchian topology yeah. all right so okay in the remaining time I want to describe the proof uh, <clears throat> and here are the main ideas I don't know. I don't know how to, you know, maybe there's a simplification and a more natural construction of this object, but, um, but Gaudi and Yuan didn't find it, and, and we didn't find it either. Um, so, so our construction of it is, well, in principle, you could, you could do it and effectively calculate the equations and inequalities, but doing that in practice would be completely impractical at this point, unless you... Uh, Got really good at elimination theory. So, so for uh, for each combination of G H G and M, uh, is there a way to find? Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. In principle, is there? There is. In principle, yes. But but I mean, you'll see from the proof that that because because I'm looking at at a differential constructible subset of a union of child varieties. Um, well, doing so. Doing so in practice, I would guess, would be quite difficult. But yeah, in principle, the argument is the argument is is effective. I mean, so in principle, one could extract an algorithm. Whether or not you could run that algorithm on any computer, uh, unless that's okay. No. Uh, too much to hope. So, 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 uh, I don't the question make any sense? But uh, is the differential child, I mean, child variety? Is this some kind of a limit of child varieties? Um, I would say I would say not. I would say I prefer to think of it in a slightly different way. Uh, but I, hopefully that way will become clear. I prefer to think of it as a as a differential sub variety 
of some space of chow varieties. Um, so, uh, but but where but where okay so so normally you know of course you you, you take these chow varieties and they're there's risky close sets of some finite type, right? But now I'll just think of them as 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 varieties, but with the Colchin topology. And then uh, I look at a differential subvariety of of that space, and and that's the sort of uh, that's the sort of object that we're looking at. So I don't think you could call it. I don't think it would be a. Maybe it would be limited in some natural way. Not in the way that I'm going to describe. Okay, so um, something has to stabilize, isn't it? Yeah. Well, so well. Uh, let's let's just see. Um, yeah, I think think that maybe your question will be answered. But but the the main source of the proof are to find some way. Okay, find a particular way of representing these differential varieties by algebraic varieties. Of course, we all know many ways of doing that. Okay. Two is to somehow bound the dimension and degree and number of variables of those varieties. And part three, look at Chow varieties, classical Chow varieties, and then prove some sort of definability results to restrict to an appropriate definable subset of those Chow varieties. This, this is the idea. All right. Okay, so. This has already been mentioned, but I just want to emphasize it. What, one thing that you cannot hope to do, unless you solve the RIP problem, is to somehow do a parameterization by generators of differential ideals. Because, I mean, if you, we don't in general know how, how, how to go from, um, from, say, an arbitrary differential variety given by its characteristic set to generators for its ideal. And that's equivalent to the RIP problem. Mm -hmm. Solving the RIP problem would probably allow you to approach this problem more directly. Probably allow you to approach many problems very directly, though. So, okay. All right. So, um, so the approach to this problem that I took is, uh, that we took is uh, to, is, following from some work of Musa and Scanlon. And um, I've spoken in this seminar before, my talk uh, last year when I was here with Omar, about a series of functors, tau m, um, from algebraic varieties to algebraic varieties uh, over k. And roughly uh, what you should think of this tau functor is uh, is doing is just taking the equations for a given variety and differentiating them in the differential polynomial ring m times and then looking at the resulting equations. Okay. Is this what you actually want to do or what you want to differentiate the characters to say? I want to do this. But um, I, I want to do this. So, all right. Um, so it's true that there's, there's a natural map, which we all intuitively know, which goes from the variety to, to this other variety, which I'm calling tau m. And it's just by taking an element of the variety and then applying the derivative to its coordinates and writing down the resulting coordinates. So in other words, these are not irreducible in general. No. <coughs> yeah. When, when, uh, yeah, it, and and even if v were irreducible, tau m of v would would not be right. in general. So if v were smooth, then tau m of v would be irreducible. And there's other conditions which guarantee various things like equidimensionality. Can I tell tau what m. you mean by smooth? V is algebraic. No, V is algebraic. V is algebraic. Oh, sorry, yes. I mean, you, you, yeah, yeah, you can only really mean one thing. Thanks, yeah. Okay, so, um, I didn't notice that. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I mean, so this Nabla map is just, I mean, it's just the map going A bar delta of A bar 
delta squared. And it's not it's, it's not hard to, to see, you can go up to M. It's not hard to see that that lands in the variety given by differentiating the defining equations of these. Okay. Now, there's another thing that you can do rather than differentiating the equations of V uh, M times. Um, you, could, you could apply tau iteratively. And I'll explain that. So, so, so tau M, tau upper M of V, I'm going to define to be tau 1, tau 1. So I iterate this m times. It's not the same thing. Um, because, many more variables. because this involves many more variables. Yeah. Each time I do this, remember, V is only an algebraic variety. So, yeah. But it is true that there's a natural embedding, which I'll call rho, from tau lower m of v into tau upper m. There's an embedding that way, and well, it's not hard to figure out what it is. The image of that embedding is just setting equal the variables that you obtain by two different paths to the same order. Jim, when yes. you move, if you do tau 1 and you have any singular points, then algebraically, then the variety splits. Can you work with that, with some singularities, if you restrict your attention to the Zariski closure of the image of Nabla? In other words, don't take the oh, whole Oh, sure, variety. but the Zariski closure of the image of Nabla will be irreducible. Yes. And you can characterize it very easily. It's the unique component of... Oh, you don't of, want it to be in reduced Yeah, I don't want to do that because in general it would be hard to calculate the equations for the... No, 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 it doesn't turn out to be too hard, I think. Well... They're exponential. Those are exponential. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is essentially it, the it, point of some things that various people have worked on, it, but... Uh, you can intersect the prime differential ideal. Well, yeah, there's not much time left. Yeah, 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 sorry. So let me let me hurry up a little bit. But we'll think about representing. How long shall I go to? Oh, well, a few more a minutes. Lot of, a lot of people in this room have a talk at twelve thirty to yeah. go to, you and eat. might want to have lunch in between. Okay, so let me describe things just briefly and informally. <laughs> okay. So. You have a sequence of varieties, and you call it a prolongation sequence, if basically what happens is that the maps from, from the iterative variety, these varieties are in, in more and more variables, because, mm -hmm. because XL is in tau lower L of, of AN. These varieties in more and more variables project dominantly down onto each other to form a projective system. and all this fancy notation at the bottom here just means that XL plus 1 satisfies the differential relations that it is forced to satisfy by XL. Okay. Rough. Okay. That's all it means. Could satisfy more, yeah. but it satisfies at least yeah. the ones that it has to. But I guess it can't satisfy that many more because of the first condition. Sure. It can't satisfy any more on the old variables. Okay. And Prolongation sequences are in bijective correspondence with differential algebraic varieties. And the theory entity of the Colchin topology guarantees that some finite portion of them determines everything. By which I mean that if you fix a given, you can fix some XL so that the maximal irreducible prolongation sequence uh, uh, contain, such, that, uh, such that the L piece is contained in XL. Uh, uh, Gives, gives your differential variety. So, um, <clears throat> so here's a complicated condition, but it's a condition that you can check by doing some projections and differentiations of the variables. And so whatever it says, it's a constructible condition in the Colchin topology. It's a definable condition. But the point is that it means something more um, it means something that is actually useful geometrically. 
So that condition is equivalent to saying that the image of Nabla is dense. Yeah, that's and, what I just asked you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Restrict and, to what I call the general component. Yeah, and so, and so the point is that you can check in a constructible yeah. way yes. if, if a given variety has the property that differential points will be dense in it. Right. By, by, when I say given variety, I mean sub-variety of tau L. Okay. And so, so that's what I just said there. Um, and you can effectively, given such a prolongation admissible variety, you can just write down the Polchin polynomial of the corresponding differential variety okay. in some easy way, which I don't want to get into. Okay, so <clears throat> now um, you can also prove that you can find a characteristic set amongst, uh, so B H of E is the closure of Nabla, yeah. which is what uh, Phyllis was saying. Yeah. And um, when you have a, an irreducible differential variety with a given index, then uh, you can prove uh, essentially you know, using, well, you could use various people's work to prove this. You could prove some degree bound that you can just read off in terms, in terms of the, the, the index. Okay, it doesn't matter what it is, but that's the degree of BH of V. And BH of V is irreducible. Um, okay. What do you want uh, the meaning of the parameters? Ah, uh, yeah, so, so D is the dimension uh, in the Colchin topology, H is the order, G is the degree of the differential child form in a particular variable, and M is the differential homogeneity degree, of the differential child form. Yeah. You can calculate all these things effectively from, uh, from B. Yeah. So, uh, so you can do this. And well, you can prove that. And it's not it's not so easy to prove that, but you can do it. And then <clears throat> the idea is to work inside of a big union of Chow varieties where the degree is allowed to range between those two things, and the dimension is well some fixed thing, and uh, which is which is there, and and uh, and n times h plus one is the number of, of variables. So then the idea from there is, is, to show, uh, is to show that you can pick out given Chow coordinates. So the coordinates in there are Chow coordinates over your differential field. But they also represent uh, differential varieties if you think about the indeterminates as differential equations rather than just yeah. transcendentals. And what you need to show is that all of these conditions are definable or constructible conditions in families, being prolongation admissible, having certain degree, having certain culture and polynomial, having certain order. You need to show that all of these things are constructible in families. And once you do that, you get a constructible subset of this union of child varieties, which parameterizes your differential child variety. How do you, how do you take the defining equation for these child forms in the algebraic sense and make it compatible with the differential? Uh, okay, so yeah, so I, I went I went a little too fast really to explain this, but um, but <coughs> it's through <coughs> it's basically through through this Nabla map. Um, there's there's a bijective correspondence between these prolongation admissible varieties and um, differential algebraic varieties whose equations are given by a certain order and degree. And, well. But the question is there too, right? Yeah, but, but I mean, you, you parameterize those by, by their Chow coordinates. And we know we can parameterize algebraic varieties of some dimension and degree by their child coordinates. And so that parameterization is done for you by the classical case. Yeah, but then how do you, how do you make the algebraic version be compatible, interpretable? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, that's what you have to prove. You have to prove that all these notions like
prolongation admissibility and um, and uh, and 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 the fact that once you apply the functor taking you to the differential setting from this algebraic variety that you get a thing with a certain Colchin polynomial in a certain degree you have to prove that that that's a definable condition on the parameters mm -hmm. but that's what you have to prove and um, so, so, so the model theoretic question would be how do, how do you connect definable in ACS to definable in ACS Sort of, but the definability here is, is just happening in, in differential fields. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you just have to, I mean, so for instance, right, I mean, you know. I mean, the fact that you just paint a variable name with delta something doesn't mean that it is delta something. It's just a really Yeah, yeah, I understand that, but. Yes, but but, there, but But the, the, the functor takes you from, from some system of algebraic equations to a system of differential equations. There, there's a, there's a well-defined functor from prolongation sequences to differential varieties. And, and so, so that's that's what we mean. So it's okay. So yeah. Let me know. Well, yeah, um, only if you're doing... Differentiate the coefficients of the, of the polynomials too. Right, 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 right. That's differentiating the coefficients is something that you need the derivative for. Yes. That's right. So yeah. it's something that's... Yeah. You know, they, they don't have to be constant. Yeah, but you won't get the... You'll get a twisted version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get a twisted... Yes. yes. Okay. Affine instead of linear subspace. Okay, so... Let me just say, uh, here are some natural questions I think you could, you could ask. Uh, I mean, I think in the Gao, Li, and Yuan paper, the most natural question is whether differential child varieties exist. Yeah. We've answered that, but, uh, but there are still other questions you might, that might be interesting. I mean, of course, the most interesting thing is not written here. It's things along the lines of what Alexei was asking, what are the applications of this? I think that's to be determined to some extent. Um, so, um, you know, for instance, you might ask, it's, it's, not, it's not clear in this case that just, just assuming um, you know, the second to last bullet point that your, um, that your variety is what's called delta complete. That just means complete in the Colton topology. Mm -hmm. It's not clear that assuming that would, would give you a, a closed set, a closed Differential child variety. Right. It might be, but that's probably the only plausible case for that to yeah. happen. Okay, so thanks, it's on that. Maybe we should decide now whether we're going to continue it too. Oh, so that's a big problem. Are you available in two? Are you available in two? I, I guess so. Uh, um, so, I had been thinking of attending John's talk. For